Welcome back. This is Chili Davis, and I'm back to do another video. I want to welcome back all my subscribers and welcome to my new viewers. This is a channel where we talk about my top stocks. We also talk about crypto and other assets that cash flow that pay you today and maybe tomorrow. Okay, so uh, right now going on, uh, the stock market was down today. And here it is. The headline reads, Russia deceived the world, says Secretary of Stink state blinking in the united states nation's remarks so here it is russia said they were pulling back their invasion on uh ukraine and today we find out that you know hey they're not actually pulling back they're just shifting things around so putin is determined to recapture uh ukraine to be part of the russia uh you know country and Ukraine says it wants its independence. So uh, United States and NATO partners are not taking this lightly, but that did affect the market today. Any uncertainty will cause the market to sway or go down. So this is what affected the market today. Just wanted to let you know that, you know, it's happening. <laughs> uh, I know I don't talk a lot about it, but it's happening. Uh, and through it all, you just have to be focused. You have to be focused on finding the best stocks at the cheapest prices uh, and finding the most high quality flyers. Also in the news today, we had Kathy Woods. She came on CNBC and she says her innovation fund, uh, the ARK, the ARK fund is way undervalued and everything that's happening in innovation is temporary. Now we don't know what her temporary is, but she's down over 55% year date. So let me take, let me show you because a lot of people don't know, but just this is just one of her funds, which is ARC. I'll just use the ARC. Um, I'll just use the general ARC. But here it is. Uh, if we look over uh, year to date, she's down 29% in this one fund. Okay, so that's dangerous. Uh, so here it is, 54.30%. And, and, and just in the first few months, <laughs> the two months of the year, she's down 29%. So there's not much people can think about this. Now, I get it. She's investing in all the top high flyers, but many people can't afford to take that risk. So I'm sorry the party is over with the art fund. Uh, you know, I know Kathy Woods is buying DraftKings, she's buying Teladoc, but guess what? I sold my Teladoc because I couldn't take it. Uh, so Teladoc, DraftKings are all in the ARC fund. Uh, there's a couple of other ones, Tesla, um, I think Neil's in there, but basically I couldn't take the stomach. Uh, over 54% in the past year, I couldn't take it. Now, let me show you a stock that I did hang with. Uh, it's not a fund, but it's a stock, uh, Upstart Holdings. Uh, if you look at it last year when it opened, it opened at uh, $43 and I caught it at uh, 50, well, I caught it probably right here at $51. So what Warren Buffett talks about, buy when there's blood in the streets. This is how you buy stocks. You buy, 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 buy. It keep peaks up. You don't get too excited. You buy, 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 buy. And within five years, you become wealthy. But the issue is you have to find high quality stocks. Now, I found Upstar Holdings uh, because of Kramer on Mad Money. And it was it's just been a great ride. I mean, if we look at the last uh, five days, Upstar Holdings, it's a killer. <laughs> I just made back 31% of my money. So this is why we talk about the long term with stocks. We don't talk about the day to day. It's great if you're day trading, and you're in and you're out of market. It's great. Uh, most of the time, day traders are just trying to take less risk. And when you have a small portfolio, you have to take the least risk as possible. But I still hold on to if you can invest for the long term and if you can invest just a little bit, take your beer money, fifty dollars every Friday, buy some stock. Okay. Not saying invest your your paycheck. Take your beer money, 
your play money and invest the stock. So uh, Upstar Holding, as you can see over the last five days, been up over 31%, especially since earnings on Tuesday. And it's just been a, a wild ride with Upstar Holdings because I actually did buy some Upstar Holdings right here at $350 per share. So I'm just long-term with Upstar Holdings. But I believe in the next few years, as I bought some that was 100 and I bought some back here at 50 and 100, I'm going to overall, I'm going to make my money back. And it's going to be way more than 50% than 30%. It's going to be probably about 1,000%, okay? So just hold tight to some of these stocks. I know it, it can be a rough ride with uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict happening right now. It's really depressing the market. Not only that, you have inflation, you have interest rates, you have several factors depressing the market right now. And that doesn't mean you just sell all assets because the market is going down. That's when you dig in and you search for the gems, okay? So that was just a quick tip on stocks. And in the current context we're in, we're in high inflation. We're in uh, raising interest rates next month in March. Uh, and then we're also dealing with the war in the background. So those are three or four things uh, that you have to contend with when you're investing in the stock market. Okay, so let me get to my regular show. Uh, in the Robinhood portfolio, we were down 4.36%. Uh, if we look through here, there was one or two bright spots. We had ticker some RBLX Roblox was up 0.87%. Uh, we have Costco, C-O-S-T, was up 0.38%. Uh, we had Walmart. Walmart was up 4%. And whereas COP, remember I've been talking about energy stocks during this whole time. Notice how the news throws in a lot of fear to take you away from buying the real good at stocks, okay? They'll tell you in a day or two, oh, you shouldn't buy energy stocks. And that's actually the stock you should buy sometimes, all right? So as we see, COP is up 1.05%. Uh, 1 and then the reason why I talk about COP, because I started buying it last year, I bought, started buying it, uh, let's see, <sighs> I started buying it, I started buying it last year at $55 per share, and I've literally almost doubled my money in ConocoPhillips, so, I mean, just be wise, I, I kid you not, the news will mislead you sometime, but you just have to study your stocks, when they say buy, that might mean you need to sell, when they say sell, that might mean you need to buy, okay, all right, so ConocoPhillips today was up uh, over 4% on the news. Again, we have the conflict going in Russia. Uh, so that's pulling on the energy markets. And, and uh, ConocoPhillips, ticker symbol COP, was up 1%. Okay. Let me share with you in the news. Uh, stock futures dip as investors weigh earnings in Fed and geopolitical politic events. Now this Fed is talking about the interest rates. Geopolitics is talking about the Russia-Ukraine conflict that's going on right now. One, Russia saying they're not going to invade uh, Ukraine, but they actually might actually are. So uh, we have a lot of intelligence. Don't always believe what they say publicly from the stage that we have intelligence over there saying it's not exactly like that. OK, and actually on last Friday, we had uh, Biden tell people that stayed at the Ukraine embassy to get out the country. OK, so I don't know what more do people need to understand when a country has its soldiers, tanks surrounding the borders of Ukraine saying, oh, no, we spent a couple billion dollars to get those troops there, but we'll we'll just pull back. No, uh, this is not only intimidation. This is action that the United States needs to take, okay? So uh, United States and other NATO countries are about to take action and we'll see what happens, all right? But it's not gonna be fair for the stock market. Um, what else we have today? Upstar CEO company is at the forefront of tackling an ancient problem of lending. Again, this is, an, this is not a new story. This is just becoming more visible to people. Uh, AI lending is basically pulling your data or pulling your bank statements, your financial statements, and actually squeezing the cash out of it. 
So that means if you got, I don't know, $3,000 a month coming in and out of your checking account, how much do you have left over at the end of the month? Do you have $100? Do you have $200? Do you have $300? If you have $200, that means you could afford that new car. If you don't have $200, that means you can't afford that new car. Okay, so this is what AI is about to eliminate a number of jobs, not just banking's jobs. So uh, AI technology, that this is artificial intelligence. This is a computer algorithm that just basically reads through the data and makes a better decision than a human being, okay? So I'll start holding this on the forefront. Uh, actually in the uh, last conference call, earnings call, they had some issues with the algorithm in the sense that you know, it wasn't able to scale up and process as many applications, but Upstart has since fixed that problem. So now they're able to scale and take on more customers. They're still in talks with thousands of banks across the United States to have their software plug in with their current underwriting uh, guidelines. OK, so Upstart Holdings, uh, like many other uh, digital native companies, are figuring out a way to take some age old problems and make them very simple with artificial intelligence, okay? So we also have, and along that FinTech line, we have Upstart, uh, we have uh, Square, which has been fairly trying some different things. Uh, and then we have SoFi. SoFi is the most popular one right now. Uh, Anthony Noto was SoFi, okay? But Upstart uh, has been building this application for years in the background. And now the banks are starting to recognize, hey, you know what, artificial intelligence is better. Uh, let's see. Why Bitcoin and Ethereum related stocks are falling today? Okay, so we did see Bitcoin drop today from about 44,000 back down to 41,000. I'm not sure either, but Coinbase uh, does hold the exchange to most of those cryptocurrencies. Uh, why Bank of America upgrades lending platform Upstart after Q4 earnings. Now, again, something else that Upstart uh, Holdings did, they agreed to buy back 400, uh, 400 million dollars buyback in shares. So again, the worry was with a lot of high growth stocks, hey, all this volatility is gonna cause the share price to go up and down. Well, Upstar Holdings accounting team was smart enough to say, hey, you know, we're going to buy back 400 million shares. We're going to tighten uh, the amount of shares available, and we're not going to let the volatility affect the, the, you know, affect the shares that much. So now uh, Upstar Holdings has come up with a plan through all this volatility period that we've had uh, with interest rates rising. They come up with a game plan, Right. So, you know, any company can do that, come up with a game plan to stabilize what's going on in the current context of the market. And Upstar Holdings did that. They are very profitable and they're scaling their business. So uh, kudos to Upstar Holdings and Bank of America uh, analysts decided to give an upgrade. OK, so you can always go to tip ranks, as I mentioned earlier, tip ranks uh, for any stocks. So if you need to know the forecast. You can see, for example, ticker symbol. And I actually, Upstart didn't really lose a lot of its uh, price targets when it did go down earlier this year. The price target is still set for $350. It was a little higher, like at $380, but still the average price target on Upstart Holdings is $213. Notice here, there's still a six buy and there's a three a hold. That means neutral. There's no sale on Upstart Holdings, okay? So just because the stock is cut in half 50% does not mean that the company doesn't have a game plan, okay? So Upstart Holdings is still hanging in there. Uh, they're still one of the high flyer stocks. They may be trading at uh, you know a third of the price or half the price right now, but they're making moves to gain that high position back, okay? So they're showing you real value for this stock right now, okay? So don't be surprised, Upstart Holdings, it's, it's coming back. It's getting back to that 200 probably within the next 12 months. All right. Uh, Bank of America, capital, uh, capital markets, business down, but pipelines are full. Okay, so capital market, business down, but pipelines are full. So, um, it, you know, I guess there's a lot of cash uh, in the market. So, uh, but 
uh, Bank of America CEO, he's saying he's confident about the market. Uh, it's, it's really interesting because if interest rates go up, I believe there's going to be a lot more going on good for the banks, okay? All right. Uh, two U.S. big tech antitrust bills backed by publishing trade group antitrust bills. Okay, that's not good for Google or Apple. On that news, you see uh, Facebook and Apple down, and that includes Google. Um, see here. IBM, excuse me, uh, Disney theme park says <coughs> face masks are now optional for vaccinated visitors. Okay, that'll probably get more people to the park. Interesting. And also, we do know that the state of New York, I believe, said mask mandates will end in the state. Uh, so overall, from the state level, mask mandates will end in New York City, which New York City gets a lot of tourists and visitors, so that'll be good for them. All right, that's enough for the news. Let me show you at the top stocks today. Okay, the portfolio was down 4.50%. Uh, the market is correcting uh, with, you know, Russia and Ukraine conflict. Uh, top stock today was WMT or Walmart was up 3.95%. Second ticker symbol that was up was COP or Conical Phillips was up 1%. And the third symbol that was up was Roblox. Roblox was up 1% uh, as well. Um, so basically, one dividend stop, another dividend stop, and a third dividend stop. Okay. So the market gets tight, like right now, you know, the money's going to go toward the dividend stocks. Okay. As you can see, you have Verizon, C Cisco was good this week. They reported good earnings and good forecasts for the year. Uh, you got BJ's, okay, and you got Gold or Barrett, Barrett Corporation. This is a gold stock. Uh, they were up today 4.63%. Uh, so uh, interesting stuff today. Um, a, a, a lot of stocks were down. As you can see, it's, the portfolio was down over $2,300. Uh, let's take a quick look at the top day gainers really quickly. Um, uh, FRO was up 6.88%. Uh, NAT, Nordic American Tankers, up 6%. This is oil tankers, that is. Uh, gold, uh, Barracks Gold uh, stock was up 4.63. AUY, uh, Yama, Yamanas Gold, again, uh, most of these dividend, uh, most of these uh, gold and, and metal and copper, they actually pay dividends, okay? Yamana uh, Gold was up 4.57%. And again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Walmart was up 3.95%. So again, uh, if you were day trading, these, these did move a lot, FRO, NAT, Gold, and AUY. Again, some people are running the gold stocks, you know? Uh, so that's about it. Uh, let's see. Again, the top stock was Walmart. Again, I would still be building my positions out, as you can see, uh, Ford is my top holdings. Uh, Ford is still trading at $17, $18. Um, I don't see it going anywhere until the next earnings call. Maybe they release some news during this quarter. But right now with the uh, war going on, uh, Russia, Ukraine, a lot of uncertainty in the market. I feel like we <laughs> that's just giving us more time to buy the stock under $20. Okay, uh, second stock that we know that we'll report in two weeks, SoFi, SoFi Technologies. Again, I hold a little over 88 shares there. I'll probably be buying some more early this week. Well, probably later this week, maybe tomorrow. Uh, and then uh, some other stocks that I wanna pick up some more, Lucid, Lucid. I own roughly about 36 shares. I wanna get my, um, average price down because I bought a lot of these shares at like $40. So I probably want to, you know, dollar cost average down to this $27 mark. Um, the only other shares I'm looking at other opportunities, RF, uh, another bank stock. I'm looking at that $25, $26 mark. So I'd, I'd really like to still get some more regions uh, bank. 
Um, and of course, all these high flyer stocks, you got plenty of time. Uh, let's see, Okta. So Okta is trading at half its price as well at $73. So we look at Okta stock price. Um, it really is down over 50%, uh, well, 39%. So again, um, until we get that first interest rate hike, I don't see a lot of these high flyers like Okta or Twilio just jumping back and getting back to that high of whether it's $300 per share or whether it's uh, $400 per share. Until we get one or two of those interest rates hikes, we're not going to see the regular eye popping numbers of, you know, 50% growth. So that's why early this year, uh, before they talk about interest rates, I spoke about, you know, getting into, you know, some more of the value stocks like Apple, Microsoft, and ConocoPhillips, because this is what the market wants right now. I mean, sure, you'll have a few like Upstart, Surprise and still uh, make moves in a, a treacherous market that we're in, but I wouldn't bank my money on some of these cloud tech stocks, you know? Okay, so uh, that's my update pretty much today. Again, uh, not a sexy day uh, with a high flyer stock like Upstart, but today we did have uh, Walmart WMT take the top spots spot uh, up 3.95 percent and second place cop uh conical Phillips was up one percent in energy stock and in third place roblox again roblox took a serious cut uh they dropped about 10 20 percent uh after the earnings call okay but i'm going to still stay long roblox with the metaverse play we'll see how it pans out uh you, you know metaverse is still fairly new um you know <laughs> I know Mark Zuckerberg just spent $11 billion on the metaverse, but if you want to play in the metaverse, Roblox has already been doing it for a few years. They got hundreds, well, not just hundreds, they have thousands of kids creating their own Roblox world using Robux, okay? So that's that was the third stock today. Third place was Roblox up 1% on the day, okay? So I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you want to learn more about some other assets, I do occasionally appear on Stop Struggling Now. Uh, uh, Stop Struggling Now. Uh, I've been on Eric Bird's channel a few times. As you can see, this is me here, Curtis. Uh, I love assets. All you need to do is acquire, control the assets, uh, crypto, stock, properties, draw interest or draw cash flows. Again, this is Eric Berg on Stop Struggling Now. Please check out his channel. He does a fantastic job talking about Airbnb, making money off of Airbnb properties. Uh, he, he has a number of promotions going right now. So if you want to buy some properties in Dominican Republic, this is the man to talk to. If you're looking to get into the real estate space, a uh, vacation home. He owns properties all across the United States. Uh, and he has actually another program. Uh, I believe he just started. Uh, but if you're interested, check out the channel Stop Struggling Now, uh, dot com, where I'm featured probably at least twice a week on that channel. And uh, Eric Burr, he knows everything about vacation homes, Airbnb. He's nearly made over a half a million dollars doing Airbnb. So check out his channel Stop Struggling Now. And I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and we'll see you on the next video.